Hello everyone, this is Johnny and welcome back. In today's video, I want to take you just on a basic tour of the area in my yard where I do propagation. Not only where I grow up um, the seed grown Japanese maples, where I have um, various stages of maples that I've grafted um, and ones that are in the process right now that I grafted this year, but also um, down below here where I do my cuttings as well. So follow along with me as I show you my setup. Okay, first of all, above several of the benches here, I do have shade cloth attached to a basic uh, canopy that I've built here, and I attached that with wiggle wire and this track, and I showed you how I um, installed that in a past video. Um, but down below here, I have a number of Japanese maples that have been started from seed. It's important that you protect especially young Japanese maples from hot direct sun so I have this in an area of my yard that gets some protection um, from the location here and also um, from the shade cloth above it. So you can see um, most of these here in this first section were ones that uh, sprouted this year. And then as we move over here, um, some of these here are actually a little bit over a year old. And then back over here, we have ones that are less than a year old, ones that sprouted this year, um, including this section here, which I'm really happy with how these smaller pots are performing. You can see just how well and how dense um, the, this little tray here is. And these are grown instead of these three and a half inch containers, which I've used traditionally. Um, I tried a tray of, I think these are two and a half inch, so roughly the same depth, um, but two and a half inches wide. And so far, um, these maples are doing extremely well. So I think I'm going to grow a lot more in this two and a half inch size next year. I have some evergreen clematis cuttings that I rooted um, last summer. And these take a little bit of time not only after you root them, but to grow into a plant that you can sell. And um, for instance, this one's starting to do this, but you can see here, here's the cutting that I took last year that rooted. And um, I cut the leaf in half there. That's why it's kind of a weird shape when I did the cutting. And um, eventually, it seems like it takes about a year, but you start getting these brand new shoots that come up right there. That's a brand new shoot that's coming up. And eventually this brand new shoot will come up and I'll be able to trim this original leaf back and that'll be the new, the new part that grows up. And this is kind of a climbing um, evergreen clematis that has scented um, white flowers and it's, it's a great plant. Um, I did do some propagation of this plant again this year and I will take you through the complete process um, once I have results and roots from that and I'll show you my process for propagating that. Okay, over on this side, I have more of the seed grown maples that were sprouted this year. Okay, so let's go over now to my taller bins, and I'll go over to some of the non-Japanese maple stuff in a bit as well. But you can see here, these are two-year-old maples, most of these here in these one-gallon pots. And you can see how those are doing. A lot of variations in the leaf shape, leaf color. Um, but yeah, those are, those are great. And so two years plus old. Then I have here, um, I did a whole video not too long ago. Here are some maples that I purchased, various varieties. Um, just a great uh, mix of colors here. This particular one, the Grandma Ghost. And that's going to have cool colors throughout the year. Um, and just a good mix there. One of my favorites, the Geisha Gone Wild. Got that one there. Um, but anyways, got those, and um, I have some one-year-old seed-grown maples across here. And then on this side, we have various ones that I've grown from cuttings. So these are grown from cuttings. These are from seed, ones that I'm kind of watching um, for various characteristics. But then, of course, back over here, I have various trees that I've grafted myself. So. This is a peaches and cream that I grafted um, last summer. And you can see 
As we go in here, that graft union is looking pretty good. So that's healing up nicely. Here's an amber ghost variety that I did from a cutting. And you can see the summer leaves are coming out here and those are looking pretty amazing. So across this bench, I have um, some yarrow in this, for t in this particular first tray. And you can see I do have some that have sprouted there. You can see that there. This is a Colorado blend and it's gonna be kind of a multicolored yarrow uh, mix. Then in this particular tray, I have Anis hyssop, true hyssop, and red valerian. Um, it looks like at the moment I only have the true hyssop that is germinated. So we can see that there. And then in this one, I have common yarrow, so just a white yarrow, and we have some that have sprouted in there. You can see that one's looking pretty good. And then I have a variety of yarrow called Love Parade that's in here. Um, crossed here, I have red salvia, white salvia, and violet colored salvia. Uh, various varieties there. I have soapwort, uh, sweet alyssum, and heliotrope. And it looks like so far in this tray, only the sweet alyssum has sprouted. And then I have rows of Sharon seeds that I started here. And so far, nothing has come up. Okay, now going below this bench. First of all, on that left-hand side, I have two jars um, with bags over them, and those are Japanese maple cuttings that I took today. I have those soaking in KLN rooting concentrate that has been um, diluted down according to the, what the bottle said. And um, one of you um, wrote in the comments of one of my videos that you like to use KLN rooting concentrate. So I'm trying that. Um, and I will bring you results at the end of this year. I'm taking you through that process, but I'm waiting until I actually have results to publish that video. So what I'm doing is I'm letting these soak in this for seven plus days, and then I'm going to go ahead and stick them in the normal 50% perlite, 50% peat moss mix that I do, and then keep those misted. Um, but I'll show you those results later on. And then over here, I have some rosemary, some Alberta spruce and lemon cypress cuttings. And uh, once again, I will have a results video taking you through the whole process later on this year for those. And then today I did some hosta divisions. So we have those there. And once again, I will have a video coming out in the future showing you the whole process of dividing these, but I wanted to wait till you could actually see results of that. And I've shown you this process in the past, how I use these clear bins. Um, but I have um, wood down here at the bottom, kind of a decking system that I've built there. And I have all this going across there. And each one of these bins have a bunch of holes drilled on the bottom. And then on the top, they have three big holes to allow some ventilation. Inside, I have 50% perlite, 50% peat moss uh, mix there. And then what I'm able to do is just, once again, easily um, unlatch that lid, open this up, and mist these several times a day. And it keeps a somewhat humid environment in here. Um, and these have worked really well for me for propagating uh, different cuttings. These are actually um, some uh, little roses that I dug up, um, a Rosa Rugosa variety. and. Uh, they, the Rosa Rugosa likes to send up a lot of runners, and so I just basically pulled up some of those runners, um, clipped the, the roots a little shorter, clipped down the tops, and I'm rooting those out. So those should turn into uh, several rose bushes, and I have um, some more room there for uh, other plants. Uh, that box is empty at the moment. Okay, then in this box, I have two different varieties of Japanese maples that I am trying to propagate from cuttings. The left there is a Sango Keiku variety, Acer palmatum, coral bark, Japanese maple. And then the right-hand side there is a variety called Orange Yola. And um, I will take you through my process for these as well once I have results. In this bin, I have some current cuttings and then two varieties of roses that I'm attempting to root. Okay, beyond that, on this side, I have some Japanese maples that I've um, grafted this year. So I have a bag 
over the scion that has been grafted onto my rootstock there. That particular one is a butterfly, a acrylamidum butterfly that is grafted on. And then I have above these some of my stock trees that I use for cuttings and scions. And so this is the acrylamidum butterfly. We have the amber ghost right here. And then we have one of my favorites here, Alpenweiss. Love that tree. Beautiful tree. And then I have uh, two more uh, trees that I grafted here. So um, I'm not sure about these. These ones, I actually lost the leaves pretty quickly. That's not necessarily meaning they're going to fail. But um, anyways, but, but there are two there. Um, I think, let's see here. Yeah, those are both butterfly. Those are both butterflies as well that I grafted on. Um, so hopefully those make it. Okay, on this side I have some lavender, and these I propagated from cuttings last year. We have some elderberries there that were grown from cuttings. Um, have a pomegranate that is grown from a cutting right there. Have some red raspberries, um, some lilacs that were grown from cuttings. We have some apple trees, just grown from seed. I'm just going to grow these out and then potentially graft onto these in the future. I also have this variegated elderberry. Um, you can see the variegation there. It's beautiful. Um, but I plan to uh, propagate from that this fall. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to have some good success with that. Then I have some Monterey cypress trees that I'm growing out. I purchased these um, in smaller pots and I'm growing these out. And then I have some various other plants that I'm using for cuttings, um, for scythia, azaleas. Um, I have my dwarf Alberta spruces. And then I have this lemon cypress tree, which I believe is pretty much the same as that Monterey cypress. Okay, down below in this bench, I have some lavender that I'm trying to root from cuttings. And I have some that have dried up. I'm trying this not covered. Um, so far, kind of mixed results. Okay, then to the left of that, in this box here, here are some evergreen clematis cuttings that I took this year. And once again, I'll show you that complete process once I have some results to show. And then in this box, I have some wisteria cuttings some Acer palmatum butterfly cuttings, some azalea cuttings, and some forsythia cuttings, as well as a Sir Damon Japanese maple cutting there. And I will, once again, take you through that process once I have some results here. Um, but those were taken um, several weeks ago. Uh, some of those on the 31st of May, some of those um, in June, like the Japanese maple there. And... Uh, the Japanese maple there, taken on the 14th there and the 9th over there. Um, but hopefully in a few months we have some results from these. And then this box over here is empty right now. And then over here on this potting bench, I have three trays um, with some seeds that I've started. The first tray has um, a blend of dahlias that are cactus flower uh, dahlias. So we have that there. This next tray has three types of zinnias and three types of calendula uh, flowers that I'm growing there. And then in this tray here, we have some purple echinacea that I'm growing. Well, I hope you enjoyed following along with me uh, with my propagation setup. Um, if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, um, once again, I do plan to have quite a bit of propagation content, especially later on this year, once I actually have some results from some of the cuttings that I've taken and the divisions of the hostas, for instance. Uh, but once I have some results, I plan to share um, the full process from start to finish with the results at the end of that video. So um, this year I wanted to wait until I had some results so I could show you that full process. So once again, if you're not yet subscribed and you wanna see the full uh, process of propagating various plants, including Japanese maples, make sure that you're subscribed. And if you click that notification bell, YouTube will notify you when I publish new content. Well, until next time,
Thanks for watching.